Somehow I never covered rotation, scaling, and flipping in Pygame when I did my core tutorial videos, so I thought I'd make this short video to cover how I'd do it. So what I've got here are four arrows, just blitted in a row, and I'll do the different transformations on them. Alright, so here's the code. It's a pretty simple script. I've just got this section here that blitz the arrows in a line with the offset here that they are in a line, and different values here so that I can modify the transformations easily. So all the transformations are under Pygim to transform, and then the flip transformation is just dot flip. You put in the image you want, and then the flip values. So I'm going to flip along the x axis but not along the y axis so that's flipping it left and right basically uh, my arrows are pretty much vertically symmetrical so you wouldn't notice a difference if i flipped on the y axis too so i'm just doing the x axis so as you can see this left arrow is now pointing left instead of right like all the others now let's go back and check out some of the other transformations so the next one i'm doing is transform.scale this one allows you to adjust the size. You can do width and height individually so that you can change the aspect ratio of your images, not just scale them. I'm going to do the arrow copy again. I'm going to do, let's say, 80 by 20. Lock out to 10. This should now become a pretty skinny arrow. It should be 80 pixels along the x-axis and 10 pixels along the y-axis. Yeah, as you can see, this arrow is now really skinny. It doesn't look that great, but you can see that the transformation is working. The last transformation I'm doing is the rotate transformation. Pygame's rotation actually does things in degrees, even though most things in Python use radians. So that's important to keep track of. So I'm going to do a 45 degree rotation here, and let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, this arrow is now pointing at an angle. And we've got all these different types of arrows. Now I'm just going to make a um, spinning arrow for the fun of it. So I'm just going to increment this spin value, and I'm just going to put it here. So as you can see, this arrow is spinning. Using this, you can see that there's a slight issue with how Pygame does rotations. If I switch off this background color to a different color, you can see what that issue really is. So I'm going to switch this to a greenish color, and you can see the bounding boxes for these images since these images actually have a black background. When Pygame uh, rotates images, it resizes the images to fit that rotated image. And since it renders from the top left corner, the rotation isn't like smooth around the center as you'd normally expect. It does this weird kind of bouncing thing. There's a lot of things related to rotation that are a little bit more complicated. Things like moving the direction you're facing and also just correcting this type of issue. I'll probably do another video soon about blitting from the center and how you can use that to make things rotate around the center too. For moving the direction you're facing, that's just some simple trigonometry. I think I'll put something up on the screen so you can see what that looks like. You multiply the sine of the angle by the distance to get the movement on the y-axis and then the cosine of the angle times the distance to get the movement on the x-axis. I may do a video in the future on basic use of trigonometry in game development so that people know how to use that. I know that I kind of avoided rotations and just anything that would use trigonometry in game development because I assumed it would be hard to learn, although it really isn't. That's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested in my projects, you can check out my Twitter. If you've got any questions, you can go to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions there, where I can answer them much quicker than I can answer them on this YouTube video. And also, I tend to forget this like every single video, but I do link the source code to whatever I do in these videos in the description. So if you have any issues, usually the first thing you can try is just using the code that I wrote, and then you can look for differences between what you wrote and what I wrote to find out whatever you did wrong. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.